So today we're talking more and more about uh, intermittent fasting. We've introduced it a couple of times. And as I continue to learn more and read some new research on it, I'm going to share some of those different things with you guys. So what I found on the, uh, the most recent one I was reading is by this guy named Matson, Dr. Matson from John Hopkins University. He's also part of, I think it's the um, International or the National Institute on Aging. Um, I may have said that wrong, but anyway, he's a PhD researcher. And he's got a really cool TED talk, if you want to get more into this. But he talked about some research studies he was doing with mice, and they were showing 30 to 40 percent an increase in lifespan by focusing on calorie restrictions. So the basic premise of intermittent fasting is to reduce your overall caloric intake. Okay, and that's not just by you know eating less potato chips every day. It's about setting up structured times throughout the week where you're consuming significantly less calories or taking in a longer-term break. So the two main um, I shouldn't say two main, but two of the most popular ways that we look at intermittent fasting are the 5-2 and the 16-8. So his research was on the 5-2, and the 5-2 is five days out of the week you eat your typical 2,000, 2,200 calorie diet a day, and then the other two days you're eating 500 calories or less. All right, so 500 calories or less would look something like you know an egg, uh, maybe a little bit of lean protein and a vegetable for lunch or dinner. So a very small amount of food. 16-8 refers to 16 hours a day of fasting, eight hours a day of eating. So a classical example would be 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. You eat, fast from 8 p.m. to the following day at noon, all right? And so the intent behind that is your glucose is stored in your liver or in your muscle cells for anywhere from 12 to 14 hours or eight to 14 hours, depending on what you read, uh, post-meal. So the idea is that you can get past that, right? You get to the point where all that glycogen, glycogen is depleted, your body starts converting fat into energy, ketones are produced, and we're in a, a um, uh, fat burning phase. Okay. So that's the idea behind it. And you know, we talk about it from a weight loss perspective all the time, which is obviously an important thing, but what doesn't get talked about as much is some of the cool research coming out on what it does to our brains from a neurological perspective and how it's on the precursor of showing some research on having effect on Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, age related neuro neurodegenerative diseases. So what one of his studies talked about was the presence of BDNF, brain derived neurotropic factor, right? So what this effectively is saying to us, right, is let's just take a step back and talk about, let's compare intermittent fasting to lifting weights, right? In lifting weights, you put the body under stress, it breaks down slightly, it's forced to change, forced to adapt so it grows stronger. They're saying that the same way, in the same way the brain adapts to intermittent fasting or putting ourselves into somewhat of a starvation mode, that it challenges the brain and the brain then releases things like BDNF and then that helps make the brain more, uh, a little sharper, helps with improving antidepressive uh, uh, depression symptoms, develops new neurons and strengthens old neurons, okay? And this is also where they're seeing potential effects in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's because of the relationship that it has with regenerating nerves. And so I just thought this was a really cool thing to throw out there that I think as we, time continues, we'll see more and more research come out on the effect of intermittent fasting. So it's not like, it's, it's also like in, uh, working out in the sense that if you haven't done anything in a year or two, you don't just jump in and run five miles one day and lift a bunch of weights, you're gonna, burn out very quickly, hurt yourself. So if you start playing with these concepts, do not rush directly into them. You're not gonna do a five day fast on day one, okay? So play with pushing back that breakfast a little bit or play with the five two, which might be a little more palatable initially anyways. So just real quick, wanted to talk about these couple things. We'll do more on intermittent fasting and stay on the lookout for next week. We have a video coming out on the Best Shape Your Life Challenge 2017 launch January 9th here at Gorilla CrossFit. We'll see you then.